and welcome to another session um, <clears throat> of your basic statistics um, literacy. Please complete the register. And remember, if you have any technical queries, send an email to CT and that. Any content related issues you have with your module, you can send the email to eboy at unisa.ac.za and copy CT and that on that email. So today's session, we're going to continue from where we left of the last time we did sampling distribution that was in June. So this week we're going to cover two sessions because last week we didn't have a session. So I feel we need to cover what we were supposed to do last week and what we're supposed to do this week. And this will enable you as well to help you with doing your assignments. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so in the first hour, we're going to look at confidence intervals. And then in the last hour of the session, we're going to look at the hypothesis testing. So we do, we'll do this. I uh, do lots of activities and I will also give you a chance to do some activities as well. And then in September, those will be the topics that we are doing. Those who are doing 1501, I don't think you do chi-square test, uh, but if you do, uh, then you will, uh, we do have a session next uh, next week, Saturday. Otherwise, if you do not do chi-square test, then I will see you when we do regression line, which will be on the 10th of September. And then after that, then we can uh, start doing exam preparations after those two sessions. Good morning. We almost done. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing, Mrs. Lily? I'm good. Hi, Justice. How are you? Yes, uh, actually we do chi square tests as well, uh, mostly. Oh, you do? Yes. yes. Then I think you, there's one of these that you don't do. Is it the linear regression? We do that as well. Okay. Mm. Then then I will see you on the 3rd and the 10th. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Then we will be done with the with the content and then we will start doing exam preparations and depending on when your exams are, then we will look at that as well. And how we can set the sessions to be very fruitful for you guys. So when it comes to confidence intervals, by the end of the session, you should learn the basic concept at a high level. I'm not going to touch on the nitty gritty in terms of um, a lot of things when it comes to confidence intervals. Um, I'm just going to do the skills and uh, type of questions that we need to focus on, on how you answer the questions relating to confidence interval. But since we building or when you answer questions on confidence interval, you construct confidence interval, and it can be for different things. So there will be three ways that we talk about confidence interval, when the population mean, and when the population mean is known, and when the population mean is unknown, and also for the population proportion. So we're going to look at those ones. And like I said, for confidence interval, we're going to look at three sections of it. Um, and when we do confidence interval, we try to see whether your point estimate, especially your parameter estimate, does it fall within the confidence uh, intervals or limits? And you will have your lower limit and your upper limit of that. And your point estimate will just be that one single value that we want to check. And usually, for the calculations, we're going to be using the sample uh, point estimate uh, because we don't always know what the population parameter point estimate is. Okay, <clears throat> so in general, the formula will always look like this. 
This is the formula for confidence interval. You will have your point estimate plus or minus, which tells you your lower limit and your upper limit. The minus represents the lower limit and the plus represents your upper limit. Time um, plus or minus the critical value. I will tell you how to find the critical value because we're going to use two tables, the Z table and the T table. So finding the critical value for those two tables, you need to know how no? because the method is different. And you need to multiply that with your standard error. And the standard error, we've learned about the standard error in uh, sampling distribution as well. So you're going to multiply your critical value with your standard error. And your critical value and the standard error, when you the product of these two creates what we call a margin or a sampling error. called a sampling error, or it's called a margin of error. So margin of error is your critical value times your standard, your standard error. That is what a margin of error is. Okay, so let's look at the different formulas that you need to know in order for you to answer any confidence interval question. So if we do confidence interval for the population mean and the population standard deviation is known, we're going to use our point estimate will be our sample statistics mean plus or minus the critical value where we will find it on the Z table and your level of significance uh, will be given to you. So we will use our alpha because the level of significance is from your confidence level and your confidence level is one minus. So a confidence level, a confidence level is one minus alpha and this alpha value that we find from the confidence level, we use it to go and find the critical value and this Alpha value is also what we call the probability value. So therefore, it means when we do alpha divided by two, we're going to use this value here as our probability on the table, probability on the table and go find the Z value. And that will be your Z values on the table. And you multiply by the standard error. And we know that the standard error when the population standard deviation is known, it will be your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And for the population mean when the population standard deviation is unknown, then it means they would have given you the sample standard deviation. And then the, the formula will be the point estimate plus or minus the critical value. Now the critical value for the T table it's different for Z, it's alpha divided by two and you go to the standardized normal distribution table and find your Z value. So you will look at the probability inside the table and go find the Z value outside. With the T table, the critical value, we find it by using our T alpha divided by two, which is your probability value, but also we need to use the degrees of freedom, which is N minus one, and our N is our number of sample size minus one. So on the table, then it means we're going to have your degrees of freedom and the probability values in order for us to go find the critical value. And we will look at that table just now. And you multiply that, with the standard error, which is your sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. For the population proportion, <clears throat> our point estimate is your sample proportion plus or minus the critical value, the same critical value that we use uh, on the population mean for the z-test. You use it for the proportion, so proportion, and when the population standard deviation are known, they use the same z-value. So it's your Z value times the standard error. Now, because we're not given the population parameters here, so our standard error, we're going to use 
the sample parameters or sample statistic, which is your sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion divided by N. And we know if they haven't given you the sample proportion, they would have given you the observation satisfying that in order for you to calculate the proportion. And that those are the formulas that you need to know in order for you to answer the question. And therefore it means you need to be able to identify the facts given in the question so that you are able to know which formula it's applicable for you to answer that. But that does not, and then let's look at how we find the critical value. So now, here is a short table. You can take this and put it somewhere where you can use it for reference, especially now since you're writing online. Uh, you can remember and memorize some of these values as well, which makes it easy. So when you practice, the most commonly used critical values are 1995 and 99 uh, le confidence levels. So how do we find the Z uh, critical value? So in the question, they will ask you that if for 95% confidence interval, construct this confidence um, uh, interval, right? So let's start with 95%, which is the most common one. Equation. So when they talk about 95%, remember I told you that the confidence level, I said the confidence level is one minus alpha. Therefore, they are saying, uh, in this 0, 0,95, because we're talking about 95% confidence level, is equals to 1 minus alpha. And that we can solve for alpha and bringing alpha onto the other side, it becomes positive and bringing 0, 0,95 to the other side, it becomes negative 0, 0,95. Therefore, our alpha value will be equals to 0, 0,95. 0, 0.5 and that is our alpha and in order for us to go find the critical value we said we use z alpha divided by 2 and our z alpha is 0, 0.05 divided by 2 therefore it is z of 0, 0.025 then I said this is the probability value so if you go to the z table if we go to the Z table and we look inside the Z table and it will always be on the negative side of the Z table because it contains the probability of small values. So we're going to go inside this table and look for 0, 0,025. And because our table is four decimal, I can just add another zero at the end. So 0, 0,228220222122 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, uh, 0, 0,0207202. Uh, maybe I need to go down. There is 256. Oh, they 25. Oh, 0, 0,0250. Oh. Then I have found it. I need to go inside the table. I found the zero comma, the probability. Then I must go outside to go find my Z value. So you always first start with the left hand side and you will find that it corresponds to minus 1.9 and go up, 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 and it corresponds to six. Therefore, our critical value will be because our critical value is our Z value. Our Z value is 1,96. We can just ignore the negative in front or we can add the plus because it's a plus or minus on the formula. So, or we can just ignore when we read the, the Z value on this table, we just don't read the negative the sign. It will not make any difference when we go to the formula. So we don't read the sign. And then we go to
our critical value it's 1,96. As you can see there, it tells you that for a confidence level of 95, our confidence level, because we know that it is 1 minus alpha of 0, 0,95, it corresponds with a critical value of 1,96. So you can do the same with other values as well, or 1999, and these are the values that I gave you here. And the only exception, it is with 90%. With 90%, uh, <clears throat> the value that you will find, so our alpha value for 90% will be 0, 0,10. So therefore, alpha divided by 2 will be 0, 0,10 divided by 2, which is equals to 0, 0,5. Zero 0.5. If you go to the table and go look for a value that corresponds to 0, 0, 0.05, you will notice that there are two values that locate that, that are located between the two values. So one 0, 0, 0.05 and 0, 0.50. 0. Uh, the difference is 5, 5. So uh with an exception for this one, we're going to take four, uh, four five as a. Uh, we're going to read both of the values four five as well. So only for ninety percent, it has three decimal. The rest of the other values only have two decimal. So that is, hence I say, you need to remember all this or memorize them or keep them safe somewhere where you can always refer back to them. Otherwise, you need to use your Z formula or your Z table to go find the critical value. Okay, let's look at an example on how we, or how we answer questions relating to confidence interval. Africa Czech is interested in activity of fake news tweets. From a sample of 50 tweets, there are 100 impressions of aver on average. Assume the fake news tweet activity is normally distributed with the population standard deviation of 25 impressions. What is a 90% confidence interval for the population mean? So now going back, reading what the question or making sure that I understand what the question is asking me. The question is asking me to construct a confidence estimate of, of 90% <coughs> for the true population of mean and what have they given me? Uh, identifying my facts, they have given me my sample size of 50. They also say on average, which means this is my mean, X bar, uh, my mean is 100. Assume that the fake uh, news tweet is normally distributed with the population standard deviation. So they gave me my sigma. So it means sigma is known. And when sigma is known, I use the Z. And that helps because now I can identify immediately from here the formula that I need to use. Z alpha divided by two and times sigma divided by the square root of n. So because they gave me all this information, I am able to do that. So the first other thing, 90% confidence level, which is 0, 0,10 or let's say 0, 0,90 equals one minus alpha. Therefore, alpha is 1 minus 0, 0,90, and alpha is equals to 0, 0,10, and alpha divided by 2 will be equals to 0, 0,10 divided by 2, which is equals to 0, 0,05. And I can take my z, alpha divided by 2, which is z of 0, 0,05, go to the table, and go find my critical value. So I can go there to the table. If I want to take the long route, come to the table, come find my 0, 0,05, and I know that it corresponds to 1,645 because it's one of those exceptions, and then I'll use that. So I know that it corresponds to 
six, four, five. Or because I have saved this table somewhere and I can come back and refer to it, I can just come here and look at the date, uh, the, the Z value, and I'm going to substitute that into my formula. So you can do it in either way. So our mean, we said it is 100 plus or minus our critical value. We did find that it was 1,645 multiply by our standard deviation. It's 25. Divide by the square root of N, we found that N is 50. And we can solve this. So this, I can do this manually. Plus or minus and first start on the left hand side to calculate my margin of error. <coughs> so let's calculate the margin of error. So we start with what is inside the bracket, which is 25. Divide by the square root of 50 equals and I get the answer as 3.53 some number multiply the answer that I get with 1.645 and equal and the answer I get is 5,8159. I must write the whole number. remember what I said. 5,8159. 5,8159. It doesn't end there because I'm still in the problem mode. I must just continue to write all the values. 5,9,5,3,2,7,5. Five. And that is my first step at it. And I can say this is 100 minus 5,8159. 5, 5, that is my first side. My lower limit, my upper limit will be 100 plus 5,8. 1,5,9,5,3,2,7,7,5. So I have my lower limit and my upper limit. I need my calculator to calculate the whole equation. So 100, you always start with the lower limit, 100 minus 5.81. Five nine five three two seven five equal and the answer is ninety four point one eight four. Ninety four point one eight. I'm going to leave it at two decimal at four decimal because my answers here are four decimals. And we go to the last upper limit. And my upper limit, I just need to go and change the sign from minus to positive, which is plus. And the answer is 105.8160 because I need to round it off. 105.81595. If I round it off, the number to the right is greater than or equals to 5, so I must add one to the number to the left and if i add one to nine it becomes ten i carry one and therefore it means it's six
and the answer will be option one. Easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's I know, Cecily. Yes. Here yeah, on this uh, mean plus minus, mm -hmm. this, this is that you, you say is that table multiply by alpha over over two. No, the, the this are you referring to this part? Yeah. That is yes, a yes, that yes. is your z over two. This is the z over two which we use. It's your it's how you're going to find your critical value. We're looking for the z value. And your alpha over two is the probability on the table that will tell you where you need to locate the z value. It's one 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 number that we need, which is the one six one comma six four five that we found. So we don't multiply Z by alpha over two. It's Z alpha over two is one one number. It's just the formula. Okay. It's we just going to find one number with that. Okay. okay so <clears throat> let's look at another example when we are not given the population standard deviation. Mabatu. The social scientist took a random sample of 30 adults with autism spectrum disorder and found that their reading time to be normally distributed with a sample mean and a sample standard deviation of 90 weight per minute and 18 weight per minute respectively. So when they say respectively, then it means the first value that they I mentioned corresponds to the first thing that they mentioned. So the sample mean will be 90%. So that it means they gave us our X bar and the standard deviation, which means this will be our S because our statistic for the sample standard deviation is represented by an S. Remember that for the population <coughs> parameters, we use the Greek letters. For the sample, we always use the Romans letter side. So <clears throat> the question also, what else is given? They have given us our N, which is 30. They are also asking us to find a confidence interval at 99% confidence level. And you can go and do the same. 0 0.99 is the same as 1 minus alpha therefore alpha will be equals to 0, 0,01 and alpha over 2 will be 0, 0,01 divided by 2 which will be 0, 0,005 right so therefore it means our z of 0, 0,005 we can go and find it on the table i'm going to use the table for now and not refer to the confidence intervals that I gave you. So we're looking for 0, 0,005. So 0, 0, 0,00. This one is 51, it's way past, and this one is 59. So I can use this number. I'm going to use this number because I know already what the critical value is. It's 2,5. And when you go to the top, it corresponds to 8. So my critical value will be 2,58. That is the critical value. And that is the same as the critical value that we got from here. For a 99% is 2,58. So I know that this one will be 2,58. That is our Z value our Z alpha divided by two. So the formula that, ah, who can tell me what is wrong with what I just did? Because we are given the standard deviation, we cannot use the Z. That is where I am wrong. We're not using Z to find the critical value. We need to use T because why I'm making a mistake is because I didn't even go and look at 
the formula. So you need to first identify the formula. The formula is the mean plus or minus your T alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom S divided by N. And if I did this first, I wouldn't have gone to the Z table and go find the wrong information. I would have noticed that I need to use the T critical value. So the T critical value, we find it by using T alpha over two and the degrees of freedom. And we know that our degrees of freedom is N minus one. So already I have calculated what my N, uh, my alpha over two is. N minus one, our N is 30. So N minus one will be 30 minus one. So our T of 0, 0,005 and the degrees of freedom of 20, 29. So let's go and find that critical value. So you need to pay attention to those small details. They can give you a wrong information if you use the wrong the wrong thing because here we would have used 2,58 and we would have gotten the answer wrong. So we need to go to critical values of T. There is a table that reads critical values of T and you don't have to worry about the cumulative probabilities. We only looking for the values closer to the table under the upper tail area. And here is your degrees of freedom on your left. And at the top, you will find your alpha divided by two, which is your probabilities. So we're looking for 0, 0,05, which is the last column, and we need to find the degrees of freedom here of 29. Remember, we're looking for T of 0, 0,005 and 29 degrees of freedom. So 29. And we know that the last column is our 0, 0,05, where they both meet. That is the value that we're looking for. 2,7564. 2, 2, 2, Our critical value here is 2,7564. So we're going to substitute into our formula the mean is 90 plus or minus 2,7564. times our standard deviation is 18 divided by the square root of n, n state. And that is We're going to calculate the rest of the margin of error. The margin of error will be eighteen. And I used my calculator to its capabilities. 2,7564 times 18 divided by the square root of 80 close bracket and equal 9,05 Oh five, okay, nine comma zero five eight four. Ninety minus nine comma zero five and zero five. Nine comma zero five eight four five four. Eight four five four seven. Um, not nice to toggle between four five four five, and that is our lower limit. 
our upper limit 90 plus I'm not going to write all of it. I'm just going to do dot dot after that. 84 dot 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 dot. It represents the rest of the other values. And because I am relying on my calculator, which has all the capabilities, I can just use 90 minus 2 comma. That gives me my lower limit as we can just look for the answer 8,09415. So 8,094. I guess my answers here don't correspond with this, but this might be the right one. And I I'm going to assume that they use 258 to answer this one, which is why the answer there is not correct, but the number two would have been the closest. I'm just going to double check. Just going to double check. 258. No, they, yeah. They used, they, you can see that they used two, um, the wrong, the wrong one, because the answer, they would have assumed that that is the answer, but yeah, that is not the right answer. The right answer should be, we should choose number four. Two, seven, five, six, four. Two, seven, five, six, four. Okay, so on this question, also they had a mistake there because this is not 29. We will fix the slides. Okay, and then let's look at the upper. The upper one, just change the minus to a plus. And zero comma uh, ninety nine comma zero five eight four. I will choose option two for this one as well. So we can always change the slides numbers. So that would have been their answer. So that is how you will answer when you are given the sample standard deviation. Okay, I'm just not going to do the other one. I just want you to do this exercise. I'm going to give you time to do this exercise. And here you are given the population standard deviation. So it means you're going to use the formula. X bar plus or minus Z alpha divided by 2 times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And you are given... 95% confidence level, so therefore your alpha is 0 0,05 and your alpha divided by 2 is 0 0,025. I'm just going to give you your critical value, which is alpha divided by 2. It's 1,96 based on what we know. So just answer that question. Uh, you, you, you're you giving us uh, alpha divided by 2 is what, 1, 1,96 and the other one? No, that's the, the only thing that I'm giving you. Otherwise, then try and answer this, find this confidence in cover. Okay, yes, yes, yes.
Please also remember to complete the register. Are we winning? Still calculating. Let me know when you're done. Okay, I'm done on my side. Okay, others? Uh, I only managed to punch the mean and that uh, Z and okay. the and the number of uh, what do you call it? That's those numbers. Okay. Some <laughs> of samples. All right. To move that on that that one which is alpha over this N H is giving me problem. But I've given you this. You just need to substitute that value. That is your your Z alpha divided by two. It's one comma nine six. This whole thing. It's one comma nine six. I I have done this. The the alpha there on 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 top of this. Oh, you mean the sigma? You mean this? It's yeah. a sigma. Okay. All right. So let's look at this. What I what. What are you given? Uh, I like what you given? According to me, I I I think I the mean is hundred and twenty. The mean is hundred and twenty. Yes, right. Your n. My n is thirty. Your n is thirty. Your standard deviation. That is the sigma that they gave you there. Right. And oh, at ninety yes. That must is represent standard deviation. Yes. So at the ninety five percent confidence interval, we know that it is one comma nine six. So you just substitute the values that you have onto the formula. You said your mean is hundred and twenty. Is my pen writing like this now? It's boycotting. Okay. Okay. So your mean is 120 plus or minus, or we can also even just split it. 120 minus 1,96 times your standard deviation of 20 divided by the square root of that. That is your lower limit. 
your upper limit, 120 plus 1,96 times 20 divided by the square root of 8. What, will, what was the answer that you got? To me is 1,1,12,8,4,3. Okay, so that will be one of the answer. And the upper limit? Anyone? Upper limit? 127.1569. 127.1569. Two seven point one one five six nine, which is not that anyway. I don't know. This comes from your past, your tutorial letters and exam papers and all that. Um, let I can just double check as well from my side to this way. Let's do that. I can use this calculator. So we have 120. I, I think five. it is number one. Is it is it five? Wait. No, it's number it's two. One, I also get two. the same answer. OK, let's double check that. I will do it from here. One comma nine six. Because then if we have multiple answers, I will have to do it from my side just to double check. Um, we have 20 divided by the square root of 30. It is number two. He is correct. Okay. Yeah. And equals. One one two comma eight four three zero. So number the only one with eight four is number two, and then we're going to change the minus to a plus. It's only come on In twenty. Did I delete everything? Oh gosh. And twenty plus one comma nine six times a twenty divided by the square root of eight. Okay. Equals. So also, we have an issue with the CMATs. So it means some somewhere, somehow, they grounded off quicker on, on one of the questions when they were answering this, when they were doing practice exercises. Uh, the answer will be option two. Okay, so let's look at the last one, uh, which is the proportion. So remember, for the proportion, if they didn't give you your sample proportion, you can calculate it because they would have given you your observation that satisfies that. So let's read this. Suppose we take a, a sample of 200 Facebook profiles and found only 34 to be ghost profiled. What is a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of Facebook profile? So yeah, we can go back. We also still need to calculate a confidence interval at 95% confidence interval. And by looking at this, since they haven't given me the mean and the standard deviation, I can assume that I'm doing the proportion. So P plus or minus Z of alpha divided by two times the square root of P one minus P divide by n. So I need to go and find out what I'm given. I'm given n 
which is 200. I'm giving X, not X bar. X, I'm, I was highlighting the number. So this is just an X. So since they didn't give me P, I can calculate my P by using X over N. That is 34 over 200. That is 34 over 200. Thirty four divided by two hundred is zero comma one seven. Zero comma one seven. That is my P. Then I can just substitute into this. I know that my Z alpha over two for Z of zero comma zero five over two, which will be one comma. 96 is the same for a 95% confidence interval. The Z value is 196. We know that because we can use this table. Remember that table 95. This is only for the Z values. 95 is always 1,96. So just substituting the values 0, 0,17 minus 1,96. Because I'm going to do lower limit and upper limit times. I'm just going to put it in the bracket times 0, 0,17 times 1 minus 0, 0,17. Close bracket. Divide by N is 200. Close bracket. And 0, 0,17 plus. 1,96 times the square root of 0, 0,17 times 1 minus 0, 0,17 divided by 200. Close my limits. Okay. So let's go find the answer. Zero comma one seven minus one comma nine six times the square root of my fraction zero comma one seven times one minus zero comma one seven close bracket divide by 200, then go out, out again, and close bracket, and equal. My lower limit is 0, 0,1179, which is this one. I can go into my upper limit. Since I have my lower limit, upper limit plus equals 0, 0,22206, 0, round it off to for decimal is 2, 1. The answer will be option 4. Happiness? Are we happy? Are we good? Or are we good? Still good. I had some exercises as well. Exercise two uh, with exercise two, you can do it on your own um, so that we can then move to the hypothesis testing. So let's look at what you are given so that you are able to answer this question. So with exercise two it says, the following results were calculated. You can take a screenshot while I was, I'm explaining. The following results were calculated from the data with the mean of 10 and the variance of 9 and the sample size 6. 
16. Now, reading this um, whole sentence for, from the following results were calculated, you should already realize from here they're talking about this was calculated from the data with your X bar already when they give you your X bar, which is the mean, it tells you this is the sample, right? The sample mean and the variance. So you need to also say because the X bar and the variance comes from this same data. Already make that assumption that this is your sample variance and now that's the other thing that you need to take into consideration. This is a variance, so it means it's a squared, right? So it means in order for you to substitute into the formula, you will have to do certain things. You will have to find your standard deviation. This is the variance, sample variance, and your N is 16. So they just wanted to confuse you right there. But all what you need to do is know that you're using your confidence level of 99 and know that your alpha will be 0 0.01. The formula you will need to use plus or minus T alpha divided by 2 and the degrees of freedom which is N minus 1 times your standard error. Right. So you need to find the S which it means S will be the square root of S squared. You will need to go find the degree, the critical value on the T table using your alpha of 0, 0,01 and substitute and find this. That is one that you can do on your own. If you are struggling, we can discuss on WhatsApp. And the last one is the proportion. So they also give you in the city with 25,000 people, a random sample of 600 revealed that 120 opposed the re-election of their mayor. Now, one thing that they want also to confuse you is give you so many numbers of which the first part is irrelevant to how you answer this question. It's just a lot of information. The only thing that is important is your N, and your X. And remember, you can find your X over N and you need to use your P plus or minus Z alpha divided by two because it's alpha over two. Remember the special exception, Z over two for a 90 percent, it's 1,645. You need to remember, always remember that. Z over 2 times the square root of your P times 1 minus P over N. You can do this as well on your own. And if you are struggling, you can have a discussion with me on WhatsApp. Okay. And that concludes confidence interval. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to hypothesis testing, unless if you have any question. And always remember, right? Because I'm not touching on lots of other things. Remember that any value after the plus or minus, all this creates your margin of error, right? Margin of error or sampling error. So it's your critical value times your standard error that gives you the margin of error. Whether you're doing it for, for Z or for this, all that is your margin of error. Critical value times the standard error gives you the margin of error. And always remember that the last part is your standard error. So this is your standard error. This is your standard error. If they ask you to calculate those things, you just need to always bear in mind. And always remember the plus is your upper limit. If they ask you to calculate the upper limit only, always remember to only do the plus side for only. If they ask you about the lower limit, you know that you only need to calculate the minus side. 
other than that, there's not much I can tell you about confidence intervals. Uh, sorry, Yes. Yeah, yes. You say the critical value multiplied by? The standard error. And it made the marginal error. Yes, the margin, the margin of error. Thank you, Cecily. Right. Okay, so now let's move into the next topic, which is hypothesis testing. So with hypothesis testing, also you need to bear in mind that you can make decisions based on different things. Like when the population standard deviation is known, when it's unknown, and for the proportions. So by the end of the session now, you just need to know certain things relating to hypothesis testing. We're going to just look at the basic principles of hypothesis testing, how you make a decision, how um, uh, uh, how you identify the fact that they are given for, to you in the question relating to whether you need to do a hypothesis testing for the mean or for the proportions. <clears throat> like I explained, we will look at three different sections within hypothesis testing. What you need to know with hypothesis testing it is what the researcher wants to claim or wants to prove. And always it uses the population parameter in your null in your hypothesis statement. We always use the population parameter. So we will use the mean or the proportion all the time, always. And always. Remember that in your null hypothesis, we always have an equality sign. So it's either they can give it the greater than or equal, less than or equal, or equal. Or it doesn't even really matter whether we have those. Always there is an equality sign to it. So it can always just be equal, 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 equal. It will still give you the same. And when we make a decision, we make a decision based on whether we're going to reject the null hypothesis or we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. And when we state the, the decision, we say we reject the null hypothesis or we do not reject the null hypothesis. There is also an alternative to what the researcher wants to claim because there are two sides to the coin. You are innocent until proven guilty. It's either you are guilty or not guilty. There is no in between, right? So with hypothesis testing, there is still the same. So you will either have a yes or a no. So your yes will be your hypothesis. Your no will be the alternative of that hypothesis. So with alternative hypothesis, there is no equal sign. So the only signs that go on the alternative hypothesis are greater than less than or not equal. Very, very important to be able to state the correct sign because using the sign will tell you whether, where is your rejection area, how you're going to reject, how you find your critical value and how you make a decision. It is based on the sign that is located on your or under your hypothesis. Uh, alternative hypothesis statement. We don't make any reference to this. We use this information to help us make a decision, but we don't come back and say uh, when we conclude and come back and talk about the alternative, only the null hypothesis. And we will look at that just now. There are different types of errors that can happen. You get type one error and type two error. I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but when you make a type one error, it is when you reject a true null hypothesis. What do we mean by that? Remember your null hypothesis is what the researcher wants to prove, but what if the researcher wants to prove a greater than or a less than? Those two cannot be under the null hypothesis. Therefore, it means you're going to be putting them under your alternative hypothesis and your true null hypothesis will be not the correct one, right? So that will be your false null hypothesis that you will have there. 
And when you have that case, you will be creating what we call a type 2 error. When you fail to reject the null, a, a, a false null hypothesis, because your hypothesis would have been in your alternative instead of your null hypothesis, you create a type 1 error, a type one, uh, sorry, a type two error. A type one error is when you reject if the researcher wants to prove a greater than or equal, <clears throat> and you reject that, you're creating a type one error. So most of the time, we will be creating type one errors. All right. So always remember the signs corresponding to the weights because sometimes they will give you weights in state of sites, like they might say exceeds in excess of, you need to know that it's greater than. If they say fewer than, you need to know that it is less than. So very important. We've learned about this when we were doing study unit six, or what you call discrete probabilities and so on. But remember now with this hypothesis testing also, because we use the signs, you need to be able to reflect in terms of what do these signs mean in weights and in a mathematical symbol. Okay, so the sign help you to make a decision. So when we make a decision for hypothesis testing, we make decision um, in two different ways, especially for Z test, we have two ways that we can make a decision. We can use the critical value or we can use the p-value. When we use the critical value, it's very important as well to know whether are we doing a one-sided test or a two-sided test. Or a two-tailed test, it is when you have a not equal sign in your alternative hypothesis. That tells you that you are doing a two-tailed test. Remember, I said the null hypothesis, sometimes we will always have an equal sign. So the reason why I'm not mentioning the null hypothesis, I'm mentioning the alternative hypothesis, it is very important to look at the sign that is under there because it tells you whether you're doing a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. And when it's a two-tailed test, your region of rejections, there will be two sides of that. Therefore, it means we divide our alpha by two. We will divide the level of significance, which is our alpha value, by two to find the region of rejection. Anything that falls, when we calculate the test statistic, if it falls in the region of rejection, in the blue shaded area, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls in the white area under the, uh, under the curve, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And that's how we will make decisions with regards to the critical value. When it's a one-sided test or a one-tailed test, now, depending on the sign on your alternative, you can see that you can state your null hypothesis as equal, but your alternative sign can be uh, less than. When your alternative sign says less than, therefore we're looking at the lower limit or the lower side of the tail. So when we have a Z critical value um, in your lower limit and they ask that the Z value is minus 2,33, whether or it's a T value, the critical value, if it falls in the rejection area, we're going to reject. If it falls in the um, uh, above critical value, we're going to not reject. We do not reject the null hypothesis. Right. The same with the upper tail, when the sign is greater than, if it falls in the area of rejection in the upper tail area, we reject the null hypothesis, otherwise we do not reject the null hypothesis. That is one way of making a decision, especially uh, whether we're using a Z or a T. When we have the Z, um, uh, or where the population standard deviation is known, or for the proportion, we can also make a decision by using the p-value. So now with the p-value, since you will be calculating your Z test statistic, which 
uh, whether it's for the mean or for the proportion, you will use this Z value to go find the probability on the table. Remember, we used to do this in the normal probability distribution and also in the sampling distribution where we will find the probability of Z less than a value or Z greater than a value or Z between. So here, the Z value, which is the Z that we know, we're going to use that Z test statistic to find the probability. And it's something that you have learned when we were doing the sampling distribution because we're going to be using the sampling distribution formula as well. Now, how you make a decision? If your p-value, this is the rule, if your p-value, which is the probability you're going to find, probability, your probability, which is called the p-value, if it's less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So you need to pay attention to this. If your p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, or we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, I need to go back one more slide because I didn't explain something clear. Remember, I only explain it here, where I said if it's a two-tailed test, we divide alpha by two, right? If it's one tail, we do not divide alpha by two, whether it's less than or it's greater than, we're going to find the critical value by just using alpha. Okay. If you're doing the p value, now there are certain things that you need to be aware of. For finding, let's say we're finding for uh, alpha, uh, sorry, for z of less than, right? If your null hypothesis, let's use the null hypothesis statement. Oh, sorry, your alternative. If your alternative hypothesis, whether it's for the probability or not, if it's less than, right? Then the p-value, your p-value will be equals to the table value, right? Irregardless of whether your z value is negative or is positive. Irregardless of whether your z value is negative or positive. Remember, your table contains the probability of a less than, right? We always remember that, that your table values cross. Uh, contains the probability of a less than. So if our alternative hypothesis has the sign of a less than, when we go find the p-value, the value we find on the table, whether on the positive side of the table or on the negative side of the table, that value we find on the table is called the p-value. Things change when the following happens. In your alternative hypothesis, your statement says it is greater than. When it's greater than, irregardless of whether you find your Z value on the negative or positive, you're going to find your P value by saying one minus the value on the table. Irregardless of whether Z is negative or Positive, you're going to say one minus the value you find on the table. The last one, if your alternative hypothesis states that it is not equal, which means it is a two-tailed test. This is a two, a two-tailed test. Whereas this one's both of them, they are one tail, one tail test. This one is a two tail test. Now, in order for you to find the p-value, so the first one, let's assume that our z value is negative. So when the z value is negative, then your p-value 
your p value will be equals to two times the table value. So you just multiply the value you find on the table by two. If your z value is positive, if your z value, if your answer of your z value is positive, then your p value, oh sorry, I must not do equals. Then your p value is equals to two times one minus the table value. So you need to be aware of this when you're making your decision based on the p value. So these are very scenarios are very important. Okay, so how you find your p value is very important. Let's look at the examples. Oh no, before we look at the example, there are six steps of hypothesis testing. If you master all six of them, you should be able to answer any questions because every statement in your hypothesis testing or options in the exam or assignment might be linked to any of this statement. So the first statement is to state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And remembering always, your null hypothesis has an equality sign and we always use the population parameter. Your alternative does not have an equal sign and the sign you put there is very important because it will tell you whether you're doing a two-tail test or one-tail test. You need to be able to identify what is your level of significance, what is your sample size, and maybe probably identify what other things you are given, whether you're given the population, uh, uh, your population mean or you given your P uh, so that if you are given X, you are able to calculate your, your, your uh, sample proportion. Step number three, you need to determine the type of test you're doing, whether are you doing a Z test or are you doing a T test? It's very important. T test, you do it when the population standard deviation is unknown. Z test, you can do it for the proportion and when the population standard deviation is known. Then step number four, you need to find the critical values. The critical values, if you're going to make a decision based on the critical values, you find the critical value. The critical values depends on your alternative hypothesis. If you are doing a two-tail test, you're going to divide your alpha by two and go find the critical value either on the Z table or on the T table. If you are doing a one-tail test, you're only going to use your alpha value to find your critical value. <clears throat> then step number five, you need to calculate your test statistic, whether it is a Z test statistics for the mean or the T test for the mean or for the proportion. You need to be able to calculate the test statistic. And the test statistics here, yeah, we are using the Z a score or the Z value formula that we learned in the sampling distribution is the same, one and the same. Step number six, you make a decision and conclude. Making a decision can be in two ways. If you are doing the Z test, remember you can either use the critical value or you can use the P value. If you are doing a T test, you only use the critical value and then you make your conclusion. With step number six, I always like to draw the diagram so that it makes it easier because remembering all the rules to say if it's a two-sided text, if it's uh, greater than or less than the critical value we reject and so on. I don't have to remember all those rules. The diagram can identify my region of rejections and then I make the decisions. Let's look at the examples. I hope. Oh. Not an example. I don't know my slide. OK, so remember what I've just said with step number five, calculating the test statistics. So to calculate the test statistics when the population standard deviation is known, we use this, the test statistics um, uh, Z state. And we say the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. Remember the bottom part is your standard error. 
divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. For when the population standard deviation is unknown, we use the test, the t test, which is the t state population. Uh, sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the sample st uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. For the proportion, we use the z test statistic, where we use the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the square root of your population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion divided by n. Your P, which is your sample proportion, if it's not given, you can calculate it by using the observation satisfying that, divide by the sample size. Let's look at the examples. I'm not going to look at the answers. I'm going to do the hypothesis testing, looking at the six steps, right? And then we will answer the questions later. I just want to give you a feel of how we use all six um, including also using the p-value. We will do the critical value and we will also do the p-value. Okay, so for a sample of 35 items from the population for which the population standard deviation is sigma equals to 20.5, the sample mean is the x bar is equals to 458.0, at the 0 0.05 level of significance, the tutor wants to test the hypothesis uh, and wants to test the null hypothesis that the mean is equal to 450 against the alternative that states that the mean is not equal to 450, which one of the following statement is incorrect, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we've got all those statements, but what is it that we are given here? So now we need to also be very careful when we answer questions and we look at the statements and everything. So in hypothesis testing, they can either give you a confidence level of 95% confidence level, or they can give you the level of significance. Always know that your level of significance is alpha. If they give you 95% confidence interval, know that that it is your confidence level and you need to find your alpha. So what else am I given? I'm given the sample size n. I'm also given the population standard deviation is known in this instance. So this one is known. So already it gives me an idea and they've given you your x bar. They give you your alternative and null hypothesis. So Statement number one, state your null hypothesis and alternative. They already stated them. I'm not going to repeat them. But what I can say here is I have a two-sided test because it is not equal. So a two-sided sided test. That's one thing I know. Step number two, state what else are you given? I know that my N is 35. My alpha is 0, 0,05 and my population standard deviation is known. Step number three, find what kind of a test is this? So since my population standard deviation is known, therefore I'm using a Z test. That's all what I need to state there. It is a Z test statistic or a Z test. Step number four, find the critical value. To find the critical value, I know that I must use Z alpha divided by two because it's a two-sided test. And therefore, Z of 0, 0,05 divided by two, which is Z of 0, 0,0250, which I now know that it is 1,96. Some of these things you know from the previous one, but if it was Z alpha, I need to know that what is Z alpha? I uh, cannot just assume that it is 1,96 because it's not the same. Because, yeah, I know that I'm dividing alpha by 2, which I know that it gives me 0, 0,0250. And I could go to the table and I could, I could refer back to the table that I shared with you on the confidence level. And the answer will be 1,96. <clears throat> 
Step number five is to calculate our Z test statistic, which is Z stat is equals to the sample mean minus the population mean uh, divide by, sorry, my pen is doing something else, divide by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And my population standard or my sample standard deviation they gave me it was 458 minus the population standard deviation. Oh, sorry, the population mean it's always stated in the hypothesis testing, which is 450 divided by the standard deviation of 20.5 divide by the square root of our n is 35. <clears throat> let's go and calculate. So let's all calculate it and see if we get the same answer. I'm going to take advantage of my ratio 458 minus 450. Divide by, and it would be another fraction, 20.5 divide by the square root divide by the square root of 35. That is equals to change the thing. Uh, because it's a Z test, I uh, can leave it to two decimals. So the answer will be 2,31. So the answer here. Is equals to 2,31. That is my answer for my. Z test. So now I can go and make a decision. Six, let's make a decision. We make a decision by drawing this normally distributed calf. And I know that my critical value was 1,96. So I can just zoom that from here. Anything that falls here, my critical value here of 1,96. And I know this side will be negative because remember at the beginning in the middle for a normal distribution, your mean is always equals to zero. So the mean is in the middle. And on this side, we can also create another region of rejection because it's a two tails, two tail or two sided test, right? So that will be one comma nine six. So anything that falls here, I'm going to reject. The null hypothesis, anything that falls here, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So that is our region of rejection. So anything that will fall on there. So now we need to take our <clears throat> Z test statistic and see where does it fall. So 2,31 is positive. It will be on the rejection side, correct? Let's see. I can change my color. So 2,31 falls somewhere to the side. And since it falls there, it falls on 2,31 falls in the rejection area. And since it falls in the rejection area, then falls in the rejection area and we can make a conclusion and say, since our Z stat of 2.31, 
2,31 is greater than the Z critical value of 1,96. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the conclude that there is there oh, I don't know how to write it in small small prints there my pen doesn't want to write there is sufficient or there is a statistical whatever you want to call it sufficient isn't that uh the the mean is not equals to or is different from uh 450 that is how you make a decision now this is based on the critical value so now let's go and do when we look at the p value so we're going to repeat the same so instead of using the critical value we're going to go and do the same step number six using the p value so now because we're doing a two-tailed test so now our p value will be two times now i need to go back and re, re, uh, uh, and look at the thing remember now my z value is positive so since it's positive so it will be two times one minus the table value so it will be two times the table value so i need to go back or go to the table value so let's go to the z critical values Z test and I must go to the positive side and look for 2,31. 2,31. So 2,3 on the left and one at the top. So where they both meet, that's where I need to be. So that is 9896. Happy? You go to 2,3 on the left and one at the top. That gives me my 2,31 is 9,86, I think. 96, 96, 9,896. 9,896. 9,896. 0,9896. Minus 1, 2, and it will be 2 times. And we not even worry about inserting it step by step. And just go to the calculator and find the answer because I'm gonna run out of space. Hmm. So let's do that. Is two times one minus point nine eight nine six. Close bracket equals zero comma zero two zero eight zero comma zero two zero eight zero comma zero two zero eight. That is our p value. Therefore, we can make a decision. Remember the rule. Let's start with the rule. What do we know? The decision rule. The decision rule states that if the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, right? So our p value is, let me write it here, our p value less than alpha or not less than alpha, but not yeah. We reject the null hypothesis. That is the that is the decision. 
right? That's what the decision rule states. So now, what is our p-value? Our p-value is 0, 0,028. What is our alpha? Our alpha is 0, 0,05. And now, 0, 0,02 and 0, 0,05, it is less. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. And you can see that both, we reject the null hypothesis in both statements, and we can conclude that there is sufficient evidence that the null hypothesis is not different from 450. Oh since we are rejecting that it is equal. <clears throat> so now let's look at how we answer the question. So six steps, whether we use critical value, whether we use critical value or we use the p-value, we still reach the same conclusion. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one, this is a two-tailed test. We did confirm that it is a two-tailed test. The critical value is 1,96. We did find that the critical value is 1,96. The test statistics is 2,31. We did find that it is 2,31. The p-value is 0, 0,01. We did find that the p-value is 0, 0,0208. If it was one-sided test, it would have been true because 1 minus 0, 0,9896 is 0, 0,014. So that is the incorrect one. And null hypothesis is rejected at 5% level of significance. We did reject that at 5% level of significance. Whether we use the p-value or the critical value, we're still going to find the correct. This, or we're going to make the correct decision or the right decision. Like I said, you need to know all six steps of hypothesis in order for you to be able to answer questions in your assignment or exam, because one of the options or all of the options might be related to all the six steps of hypothesis, as you can see from here. Okay, any questions relating to hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is no? If there are no questions, then let's look at another example. So here we're looking at when the population standard deviation is unknown. How do I know that it is unknown? Let's read the question. A study has done, or, or a study was done on a daily cash balances. Assume that they are normally distribution of the bank to investigate the hypothesis that the average cash balance do not exceed 25,000. The sample of 100 days yielded a mean of 24,920 and the standard deviation of 300. A hypothesis test with an alpha of 0 0.05 was that the critical value in this case is uh, there is some missing information in my thingamabob. So the critical value in this instance, we're going to calculate it because it's not given in this because I think I, I didn't take into consideration when I copy from in question four. Probably this was question five. But we, we, will, we will fix that. We have enough information. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So there is our statement. So now you need to pay attention did, uh, to the statements. 
because we need the six steps of hypothesis testing. So let's start with the first step of hypothesis testing by first looking at what we given. So it says the average balance did not exceed 250. That's what the, the, the researcher has or the aim of the researcher wants to prove that they did not exceed 25,000. We are also given the sample size, which is our N. We are told what the mean is, which is our X bar. We are also from the same sample. So if you read this question, the sample of 100 yielded the mean and the standard deviation. So it means the mean and the standard deviation given here comes from the sample. So this is your S standard deviation because it comes from this sample unless if they have explicitly stated there that and the population standard deviation is this but since they didn't say that and the whole sentence reads from the sample so we assume that the standard deviation here is from the sample a hypothesis test of alpha we are given our alpha and we need to choose which one of this is correct so the statement number one, do it not exceed. Let's go to our, remember this, does not exceed, does not exceed means it is less than or equal, right? So then what the researcher wants to prove cannot be, uh, can be placed in your, uh, uh, in your hypothesis testing. So let's see our, Null hypothesis states that the mean is less than or equal because does uh, did not exceed or does not exceed. It's the same as less than or equal, and that will be less than or equals to twenty five thousand. Therefore, your alternative hypothesis will state that the mean is greater than twenty five thousand. That is step number one. Step number two, we need to state what else we are given. Our alpha is 0, 0,05, our n is 100, and we are not given the population standard deviation. It is unknown. So those are the sub some of the things that we know. Here's step number three. What kind of a test are we doing? Since the population standard deviation is unknown, therefore it means we're going to be doing a t-test. Going to be doing a t-test. Step number four, we need to go find the critical value. Remember how we find the critical value for t-test? Sorry, my bad. Critical value for t-test we use uh, we need to also pay attention to the following. The sign, it says greater than, therefore it means that it's one-sided test, which is one thing that I didn't mention here. We're doing a one-sided, a one-sided test. So we're going to find the critical value by using alpha and the degrees of freedom. And we know our degrees of freedom, it's N minus one, and therefore, our T alpha, we were told that it is 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom N minus 1, N is 100. So it will be 100 minus 1 and therefore our critical value will be given by T of 0, 0,05 and 99 so it means we need to go to the t table so let's go to the t table t table oh, t table t t t there is our t let's go down until we get to the hundreds and there is 99 and we're looking for 0, 0,05. So it's the third column, right? One, two, three. So we can go down to the third column. One, two, three. And 
1,6604 is our critical value. Step number five. Let's do step number five. We need to calculate our T statistic. So we know that T is equals to X bar minus the mean divided by the S over the square root of N. So now let's substitute our X bar. We did identify it in this. It's two four nine two zero minus the population always stated in your hypothesis, which is twenty five thousand divide by your standard deviation as 300 divided by the square root of n of 100. Two four nine two zero subtract two five one 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 so zero 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 divide by three hundred divide by the square root a hundred and that gives me minus two point six 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 six. six. So it's two decimal, remember? It's minus 2.67. Minus, minus 2.67. Um, okay, so let's make a decision. Our step number six, we make a decision. We draw our region of rejection. Our critical value, we did find it. Also pay attention, the sign says greater than right. So greater than will be on this side and we will put 1.6604 there because this side is the greater than. Okay, so it's one-sided, greater than will be on that side. Okay, so. Now let's make a decision. Minus 2.6 falls somewhere on this side. If in the middle the year is zero, you know that it will fall in there. Do not reject. So this side is there. Reject null hypothesis, and this side is there. Do not reject the null hypothesis. So, what is our decision? We do not reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. It's at alpha of 0 0.05. Now, let's look at the options. We need to choose the incorrect value. So, choosing the incorrect value, let's see. Statement number one. It says the alternative hypothesis is less than 250. I just want to double check something in terms of the question that the average balance 
did not exceed. I just want to see our sign there if we use the right sign. Does not exceed. This is exceed, that is does not exceed. We did use the right one. Exceed is greater than. Therefore, does not exceed will be less than. So we use the correct. Because that says did not exceed. If it did say it exceeds, then it would have been a different question. So question number one, the alternative hypothesis. We know that it will be greater than because our null hypothesis is less than or equal. And this is looks like it is the incorrect word. The test statistic is minus 2.7. We use the T table in this because the population standard deviation is unknown. So that's what we did. There is enough evidence to support the statement at alpha. There is because we were able to make a decision. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not reject the null hypothesis, and that is correct. So the only statement that is incorrect it is option number one. That's how you will answer the questions. Just want to see what time is it. We yeah, are right on top of the hour. Okay, so I had one last activity and then we are done. But before I do that, before I do the um, for the proportions, um, I do have additional exercises that you can also look at. So you can take screenshots. So exercise one. Uh, also looking at you are given the population. So normally the population is normally distributed with the population with the standard deviation. So that pop, uh, standard deviation comes from the population. So it's the sigma. So you just need to know how to interpret or do this in order for you to answer all these questions. The second one. Uh, it's proportions because they gave you percentages and you can also identify by looking at the proportions. Yeah. The other one is also proportion. So let's, before you go, let's look at this one question. Consider the following information from question five, uh, which is the other thing because I copy and paste from the previous tutorial letters, so you will find this kind of things in the notes as well. Most of the schools reported a decline in the number of absences from the education department, learner transport and school nutrition. In a sample of 200 schools from Joe Mugabe, yeah, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, district municipality, 76% reported the decline in the number of learners absent. The district manager is adamant that the true pro population proportion of schools that reported the decline in the number of absences is different from 78% previously. Formulate a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and conduct the hypothesis testing for the true population proportion at 5% level of significance. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So instead of me doing the six steps, I'm just going to answer the questions as I see them. <clears throat> because you already know how to answer those questions. So but first, let's identify what we give it. So we are told this sample size is N of 200. Uh, from Joe with a 76% decline. So our P is 76% uh, 
which is 0, 0,76. And what they want, the district manager says there is an the number of absence is different from 78. And because they say it's different, so therefore it will be a not equal and equal. It's a two-sided test that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing a two-sided statistics with our proportion, which is the pi. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention, those who are doing 1501, remember when I speak about when, especially when we get to the proportion, our P for you is your P Gabi, and our proportion for you is P, it's our population proportion. So don't get confused with the letters. <clears throat> You just need to use the correct ones for your module as well. <clears throat> so, uh, you know the six steps. I'm not going to go through all the six steps because we ran out of time, but this is the two sided test. And since it's the two sided test, we should be able to use that information to answer some of these questions. So, on this question, we're looking for the incorrect statement. We need to calculate the test statistic. That is question number one. So, we know what the test statistic is. It's Z that is equal to P minus the population proportion divided by the square root of population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by N. So substituting the values, we know that our P, we did find that it was 0, 0,76, 0, 0,76 minus 0, 0,78, because that's what the population proportion would have looked like, divide by the square root of 0, 0,78 times 1 minus 0, 0,78 divide by our n of 200. Let's quickly go and calculate that. Point 0.76 minus 0.78 divide by the square root of 0.76 now, uh, 7, 8 times 1 minus and 7, 8, close bracket, divide by 200. Um, I'm sorry about the noise. They are cutting something next door. They are welding 0, 0,68. Minus 0, 0,68, which means this is correct. So the next one it says, what is the p-value? Remember, let's go back to refresh your mind in terms of the p-value. If it's negative, it's just two times the table value, right? For a two-sided test. If you forgot, just wanted to go and remind you on that. So in order for us to find this p-value, we're going to say two times the value we find on the table. And on the table, we need to go to the negative side on the Z table using our Z test, test statistic. So we go to the Z table. We're looking for minus 0 0.6, which is that, and 8 at the and which is the last second column. So, the last second one, which is this one, 0, 0,2482. 0, 0,2482, which is equals to, Four, six, eight, nine, four. Zero comma four nine six four, which means that was incorrect. 
uh, the alternative hypothesis is that their proportion is not equal. Yes, our alternative would have been because it's a two sided test, would have said the population proportion is not equal to 0, 0,78, which is correct. The null hypothesis is not rejected. I don't know that. Let's check. The rule says the p value, if it's less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. That is the rule. So our p value is 0, 0,49. Can do that. 0, 0,4964. Our alpha. We were told it's at 0, 0,05. So what is the sign? The sign is greater than. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Not rejected. That is correct. Uh, we can conclude that the proportion has that reported the decline in the number of absent is not significant different from 0, comma zero because it's not different if we reject the null hypothesis where our null hypothesis would have stated that the proportion is diff it's, it's not different the proportion is equals to uh, 0 0.78 and we have rejected that that it is equal and say and that is our conclusion for today just to recap we looked at the confidence intervals for the mean where the population standard deviation is known and unknown and for the proportion and always remember that we always use the point estimate plus or minus indicating whether the lower limit of the minus and the upper limit with the plus times the margin of error, which is your critical value times your standard error, gives you the confidence interval. Always remember that. Uh, to find the critical value, always remember, depending on the table that you are using, you would divide alpha by two by using the level of significance or by using the confidence level. Coming to hypothesis testing, remember the six steps of hypothesis testing where you need to test the null hypothesis and the alternative or state the null hypothesis and the alternative. Bearing in mind very well that your null hypothesis, the statement always has an equality side and it is what the researcher wants to prove and it is what we use to make conclusion. Also, your alternative hypothesis being the statement that is the opposite of your null hypothesis does not have an equal sign. And the sign you put on there tells you whether you're doing a one tail test or a two tail test. If you're doing a one tail test, there is one region of rejection. So it means when you find the critical value, you only use the alpha value when you uh, do a two tail, we're going to use alpha divided by two. Now, the third step is for you to identify what other information or facts you are given, like your alpha value and your N and other related facts within your statement uh, that might help you to answer the question. Step number three, you need to um, be able to state whether you're doing a T test or a Z test based on the information given. Whether are you given the population standard deviation or you've given the sample standard deviation or you're doing for the proportion. And you need to clearly state whether is it a T test or a Z test. Step number four, you need to be able to go find the critical value to find the region of rejection. Your critical values, also remember, it's based on your alternative hypothesis testing statement. If it is a one-sided test, you find your critical value by using the alpha value. And if it's a T-test, 
you're going to use the alpha value and the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. Again, you need to be able to calculate your test statistic. Your test statistic uh, is the same as your sampling distribution Z score based on whether the population standard deviation is known or is for the T test or is for the proportion. And always remember for the proportion, if you are not given the sample proportion, you will be given your X value or your outcome that you can use to calculate your sample proportion. The last step is for you to make a decision. To make a decision, you can either use the critical value and the test statistic to make a decision, or you can use your test statistic and your, PV, uh, your alpha value in order for you to make a decision. When you make a decision based on the critical value, always remember your uh, regions of rejection. If it's a two-tailed test, there will be two sides. If your test statistic is negative, does it fall in the negative side of your region of rejection? Or if it's positive, does it fall in the region of rejection for the positive side? And you make that decision based on that. If it is one-sided test, depending on which one. If it's a less than, in your alternative, the sign was less than, then it will be on the negative side of your um, region of rejection. If it was greater than, it will be on the positive side of your rejection area as well. You need to be able to do that. If you're making use of the p-value, also remember to find your p-value if it is one-sided test and your value of your Z is negative or positive, but it is a less than. Always the p-value will correspond to the table value. If it is greater than, you always going to say one minus the table value in order for you to find your critical, your, sorry, your p-value. If it is a two-sided test, Remember that if it is negative, your Z value is negative, then you're going to say two times the table value, which is the value you find on the Z standardized cumulative normal distribution table. If it is positive, you're going to say two times one minus the table value on the standardized cumulative normal distribution table. And that is it. Are there any questions, comments before I give you your Saturday afternoon off? No questions from my side. Thank you, Slizzy. Thank you very much. If there are no other questions, please remember to complete the register. And yeah. just go there and stop the recording. Uh, Thank you very much, Ms. Lizzie. Thank you. Any 